Hi everyone, welcome to Mike Likes Robots. Today we're doing something a bit different. I'm going to tell you about how to get started as a robotics software development engineer. I'm going to be telling you about what you need to buy and what you need to practice to get going. Who is this video for? Well, if you've seen the Boston Dynamics robot running around different pallets and its little spot robot walking around on legs, or you've seen rovers moving around your streets and thought, that's something that I want to be building, this video is for you. Although, if you're more interested in 3D printing parts and making custom circuit boards, it's not likely to be as helpful, but feel free to stick around. So who am I to be talking about this to begin with? I started by taking a master's degree in electrical and electronic engineering back in the UK, and I have 11 years of software development experience, seven years of which I spent specialized in robotics. Over the years, I've developed quite a lot of projects. A few that I can name are using a robot arm to cook steak and chips, using a robot arm to clean up a messy bedroom, using a rover to explore a maze and solve it so it finds its way out, working on Amazon Scout, which is another robot but for delivering packages. Those give you an idea of the breadth of robotics that I've worked on. I'm not a deep expert in any particular area, but I've touched a lot of technologies. What I specialize in now is connecting robots to the cloud and getting value from it, which is what this channel is all about. And it's why I work at AWS as a senior software development engineer. So with all that in mind, that's why I feel qualified to help you get started in the world of robots. What do you need to buy to get started? The good news is you probably already have what you need to get started, which is some kind of computer. If it's relatively powerful, that will help. And if it's got a GPU, that will help you if you want to do simulations. But there's no real constraint here. Even operating system, you can use anything. Linux and Mac will be easier to get started with, but Windows even has the Windows subsystem for Linux, which means that you can use Linux as if it's native. So what you really need to do to become a robot software engineer is focus on the software engineer part. You need to learn how to program. How do you get started learning to program? Well, the first step is to pick a language. As you want to be a robot software engineer, you don't need to look at all the thousands of programming languages that are out there because there's two main languages used in robot development, and that's Python and C++. Python is going to be a lot easier to get started with. It's simpler to understand. You don't need compilation steps and you don't need to manage low level things. So that would be my recommendation. Now the next step is, how do you learn Python? For this, I'll link my favorite in the description, which is Codecademy. There's a lot of resources online, but Codecademy gives you a step-by-step -step instruction of what you're doing in the language and how it works. That'll give you a basic grounding in the concepts. Once you understand the concepts, you need to practice, practice, practice. The best way is to pick a project that you want to work on and build it up as much as you can. If you're not sure what project to build, there's a couple of ideas. One, a text-based RPG, where it says, you are in a forest, what do you do? Go forward or search the area. That gives you a lot of space to build up a story and it becomes a lot more exciting. Or you can do a text-based Pokemon battle simulator. There's so many things that you can build on here and use to practice the concepts of the language. Now, you may also have heard other advice for how to learn puzzles from the likes of Leak Code or Project Euler. And I think they're great for puzzle solving and enjoying yourself, but I don't think they're great for learning a language because the focus is on the puzzle rather than on the language concepts. So I'd advise you to pick the project rather than just doing little puzzles. If you get stuck, look at tutorials and forums online and get a mentor if you can. In essence, that's all you have to do. Get a computer, pick a language and build a project in it. Look online at forums and tutorials if you get stuck, and find a mentor if you can. If you do this for long enough, you'll ingrain those concepts in your head to the point where you're using them without even thinking about it. A couple of tools that you absolutely need to learn on top of your chosen programming language are version control and the terminal. Version control is a way that you can save different versions of files over time, and it is invaluable for a software developer. What you should do is pick it up, maybe look at a course and learn the concepts, and then start using it in your project. You'll find it invaluable when you've made a change and you don't know what broke it, and you can just look at the most recently working version of your code. The other tool is the terminal, and here I'm talking about the Linux terminal, like Bash. 
It's how you can run code and commands by typing them into the computer instead of clicking buttons. I don't think you need to go out and look at a course for how to do this, but learning some tips and tricks will really help you when you start developing software. So, so far, we've got get a laptop, pick up a language and build a project in it, and learn version control and terminal to interact with it. All of this you can do from the comfort of your own home. So what about robots? So far we've talked about programming in general, but not much about robots in particular, and that's what you're here for. So if you understand the concept of your language, it's time to get started programming robots. And the place that I would start is Robot Operating System, shortened to ROS. This is the most popular robotics framework, and it's free, so you can install it on your machine and start playing with it. Follow the documentation and the tutorials that are available online, there's plenty of them, and there are videos on this channel that can help as well. In particular, try to understand the publish and subscribe messaging system. This is really common in multiple domains, not just in robotics, and understanding how to use it will help you a lot. If you're interested in simulating robots, that is a great thing to be able to do. It's faster than working with real hardware and easier to get started with. You may need a more powerful computer to be able to do this, but you could look at options like Gazebo for ROS or NVIDIA Isaac Sim to be able to start moving robots around virtually. It'll help teach you the basics and get you going. If you're interested in embedded programming, I would consider that useful but optional. It'll help you understand the lower level of computers better, which is always helpful, but it's mainly more useful if you want to start getting to the lower level of the robot, like writing motor controllers and things of that nature. These days, most boards that you find on a robot are dev kits running full operating systems like Linux, and really you'd be better off learning those. But if you are interested in learning embedded, I would recommend picking up a dev kit like a Nucleo, I'll link it in the description, and then making sure you understand how the GPIO and the serial communications work. If you want more information about this, let me know and I can make another video. So how about buying a real robot to play with? Well, this is a bit more tricky because most of the robot kits that you'll be buying under say $100 on Amazon are probably not going to have that powerful a dev kit on board, which means it's going to be hard for you to program it to do what you want. It's quite easy to find a robot that comes with a remote control so you can drive it around, but if you want to build your own robot, that's going to be a lot more difficult at that budget. You can buy a cheaper dev kit and then buy another board to put on top of it that you can program, but this is going to be a lot more manual, and while you're starting out, I'd recommend just buying a pre-made robot if you can afford it. If you have more of a budget, I would recommend going with the JetBot. It should run up just under $300 and is a great starting point with a camera, batteries, motors, and there's a playlist on my channel that should help you get started with it. If your budget is even higher than that, you could look at getting a turtle bot. These are the ROS dev kits that they make available so people can learn how to use ROS. They run up nearer $700, but they do come with everything on board and they even have LiDAR, which is great for mapping out rooms and starting to do more advanced algorithms. If you don't have much of a budget, you could buy a cheap dev kit and buy your own board, but that's quite complicated. I would stick to running robots in simulation until you can get your hands on some more advanced hardware. Finally, before closing this video out, I wanted to give you some more general advice. And what it boils down to is this. Take advantage of every resource you can to maximize your potential. Every book that you can find, every tutorial online, anyone who is willing to help you, to really make sure you're getting everything you can. And I believe the most important part of that is finding a mentor. I touched upon it earlier in the video, but I really want to emphasize it's one of the best ways that you can leapfrog learning through making the mistakes yourself. Just learn from someone else's experience. Universities and jobs don't really push this. They expect you to do it for yourself if you do it at all. So this is my message to you. Whether you're in university, in a job, or just practicing on your own, find someone more experienced that is willing to help you. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.